There is total three stages that we will talk about reception, transduction, and response. Before getting into the details of each stage, just an overview. If we're receptors, the process of cell signaling is completed once ligand binds to the receptor and gene is activated directly. But in most cases, it's not true. Just like a message is passed on from one person to another in children's game of Chinese whispers or telephone, the signals must be passed through other molecules for receptors on the cell membrane. Now coming to the stages of cell signaling pathway. Reception. Reception is receiving something right. Like how guests at a hotel go to the reception first where the staff receive and greets them. Just like that from physiological point of view. So in this step, a signal is received by the cell. It happens when a ligand or a signaling molecule binds to a receptor on the surface or inside of the cell. As you can see here, a ligand binds to the external receptor of a cell. But wait, what is this talk about external and internal receptors? What is the difference between the two? Well, receptors can be divided into intracellular receptors and cell surface or extracellular receptors. The intracellular receptors are those that are inside the cell, in the cytoplasm and cell surface receptors that are found in plasma membrane. The second stage is transduction. When the signaling molecule binds the receptor, it changes the receptor protein. This change in the receptor sets off a series of events like domino effect. Each relay molecule in the signal transduction pathway changes the next molecule in the pathway. Ultimately, final target protein is activated. The final protein that was activated in previous stage triggers a specific cellular response. The response generated can range from regulation of gene expression, opening or closing an ion channel in the plasma membrane, promoting a change in cell metabolism are some of the common outcomes of cell signaling. Now then let's move on to the topic of second messengers. You may be wondering, did I miss some part of this lecture? Wait a minute. Second messengers? What about the first messengers then? Not need to worry. The first messengers are the ligands that bind to the receptor. Second messengers are small, non-protein molecules. So why are they called second messengers? The answer to that is in their name because they pass along a signal initiated by the binding of a ligand that is the first messenger to its receptor. Second messengers include calcium ions, cyclic AMP, and inositol phosphates. Let's look at their details one by one. Starting with calcium ions. Calcium ions are widely used as second messengers. Let me tell you how. Depending on the cell type, calcium ions can activate or inhibit various enzyme and transport systems, change the ionic permeability of membranes, or alter cytoskeletal structure and function. These responses are not brought about by calcium ion itself, but VIA, a calcium ion's binding protein, calmodulin. Calcium may also act directly, for example, on troponin. Pathways that use calcium ions as second messengers act by increasing the cytoplasmic calcium ions concentration. This increase is produced by releasing calcium ions from intracellular stores or by increasing the entry of calcium ions into the cells. Calcium ion is released, but how does that help in passing along the signals? Released calcium is attached to proteins having binding sites for calcium and change their activity. This response is different for different types of cells. For example, calcium ion signaling in cells in the pancreas leads to the release of insulin, whereas in skeletal muscle cell, it leads to muscle contraction. Another important second messenger is cyclic adenosine monophosphate. An enzyme called adenylocyclase converts ATP into CAMP, removing two phosphates and linking the remaining phosphate to the sugar in a ring shape. 
Cyclic AMPA activates one of the cyclic nucleotide-dependent protein kinases that catalyzes the phosphorylation of proteins, changing their conformation and altering their activity. Key AMP signaling is turned off by enzymes called phosphodiesterase, which break the ring of CAMP and turn it into adenosine monophosphate, AMP. Third in our list of second messengers is inositol phosphates. Phospholipids are important structural component of cell. True, but they also have a very important role in cell signaling. Phospholipids called phosphatidylinositol can be phosphorylated and sliced in half, releasing two segments. Phosphatidylinositol is successively phosphorylated to form phosphatidylinositol phosphate, then phosphatidylinositol bisphosphate. Phospholipase C catalyzes the breakdown of PIP2 into inositol trisphosphate and diacylglycerol. These fragments made can both act as second messengers. BAG stays in the plasma membrane and can activate a target called protein kinase C. IP3 diffuses into the cytoplasm and can bind to ligand-gated calcium channels, releasing calcium ions that continues the signal cascade. That is all about the stages of signaling pathway and the second messenger molecules. Explore our extensive library of over 1,800 video lectures to learn about a wide range of topics. Only on Scadia.com.